Comfort is a funny thing, and some solutions are obvious. Does your butt hurt? Get a better seat. Do you feel too bent over? Get higher handlebars. Too much wind? Get a windscreen. But what about the pain points you didn't think you could fix, or didn't think about at all? Let's get into those. Four categories. Your hands, your eyes, your ears, and your mind. First off, your hands. As they say about carrying a burden, it isn't about how heavy it is, it is about how long you must hold it. And while you can take your left hand off the bars at times to flex your digits, your throttle hand must stay on the bars, holding the throttle open. Let go and the bike slows down, eventually stopping. So how can we let your throttle hand take a break so you don't end up with the claw? Enter universal cruise control devices. Some are slapped on top of the grip, others seamlessly integrated. What you get comes down to your budget and how much you care about aesthetics. Cheaper cruise control devices that rely on using your brake lever to hold the throttle open are certainly not the prettiest thing, but they do the trick. If you're willing to spend more, the Atlas Throttle Lock is the clear winner in terms of aesthetics as it slips between your grip and throttle housing. The Atlas Throttle Lock is the most set it and forget it here. It's there when you need it and out of the way when you don't. I'll mention here though that Atlas Throttle Lock did send me one for free, although this isn't a sponsored video. I reached out to them because I liked the concept and they were kind enough to send one my way to try out. Call this a two-parter because a lot of videos have focused on heated grips, so we're gonna go deeper. But heated grips make sense. Below 50 degrees Fahrenheit and your hands are going to start to freeze in place, at least for me. So instead of wearing thick gloves that reduce dexterity, go right to the source and heat the muscles in your palm and fingers. Here's my opinion though. I would get the universal pads that go under your own grips instead of those full heated grip assemblies. I bet they aren't as warm, but I think they're better in the long run. Simtex heat demons are about $60 and will never need to be replaced even once your rubber grips wear out. Get a pair of Oxford heated grips and you're looking closer to $100 and that's $100 every time you need to replace the grips. And besides the price, you're also now stuck with their grips. So you better hope you like how they feel. I'd spend the one time $60 purchase and then slap whatever your favorite grip is on top. It essentially makes your favorite grip a heated one now. Oh, and the stickier the grip, the less strength needed to hold the throttle open. And there's your third way to be more comfortable. Now let's talk about your eyes. You say, Jacob, first of all, my headlight is fine. And two, even if it wasn't, how is replacing it going to make me more comfortable? Did you just try to adjust the brightness on your phone or computer? I thought so. The more you can illuminate what's in front of you, the less strain on your eyes and brain as it tries to define what's in front of you. Here's a few rules I have though when it comes to messing with headlights. HID bulbs only go in projector housings. If you put HIDs in a reflector housing, it blinds traffic, it throws a terrible beam pattern, and it lets everyone know you're compensating length with lumens. Two, don't overstress your charging system. Before you go and hook up four halogen fog lights to your crash bars, make sure your bike's charging system is actually able to handle that load while riding. Third, try not to make your headlight smaller if you can. A lot of people will take their seven inch headlight housing and they'll swap it out for five inch because it's a little bit more inconspicuous. The problem is that oncoming traffic doesn't have two headlights to reference your scale and thus distance. They only have the one. So instead they try to determine how far out you are by how big the single beam is. Big light, close, little light, far away. Try not to confuse them. I went with a truck light LED housing because I wanted a bright light, a lower power draw than other options, and didn't like the look of any of the projector housings. But there are many, many great options out there. If you're already on a more modern bike but still need more lighting, take a look at adding additional LED lights. Rigid Industries and Baja Designs are definitely the industry leaders, but again, lots of great options. Next is your ears. I have converted so many friends over to wearing earplugs that it kind of turned from an ask to now a demand because I know I'm right. You are going to have a more enjoyable ride on your bike. I promise. Let's cover a few misconceptions that might be holding you back from giving them a try. Unless you have an extremely loud bike, it is not your exhaust that will make your ears ring after a long ride. It's the wind noise. Not saying that exhaust noise doesn't play an impact in hearing loss, but I promise you can damage your hearing on a Vespa if you're on the highway long enough. Second, a nice helmet isn't even close to what a pair of earplugs can do. I wear a budget Scorpion helmet and Lena wears a $400 plus showy because I care about her more than myself, of course. But we can both attest that that showy is nowhere close to a pair of dollar foamies. And if it was, it would be an expensive alternative at that. And this is the big one. I think people who are afraid of trying out earplugs think that it'll sound like this. When really it takes what normally sounds like this. And turns it into this. As someone who has had tinnitus for about a decade already, please take it from me and give these a try before deciding you're better without them. 
Lastly, comfort is in your mind. In regards to your mind, we're gonna talk gear. Yes, gear, but not what you may think. Sure, wear warm gear when it's cold, wear breathable gear when it's hot, but that's not what I mean. Have you ever taken your bike around the block and maybe didn't put on the helmet or didn't put on the gloves or something like that? Sure, it was maybe fun for a minute or just felt different, but there has started to become a voice in the back of your brain telling you that something was off and not in a good way. So while of course reducing gear can make you feel uncomfortable, I think it's worth taking a look at what gear you use on a daily basis and see if there are any safety gaps that you should try filling. I wear above the ankle leather boots, jeans, a riding jacket with D3O, gloves, and a helmet. And I tell you what, I would be more comfortable with true riding pants. When I'm leaning deep into a corner or nearing real high speeds, I start to think about how I've got about a millimeter of denim between me and a 50 foot slide on the asphalt. Not the greatest thing to slip into my mind while I'm riding. And while I haven't tried them yet, something more subtle like those riding jeans from Tobacco Motorwear would be my pick, and probably will be come this summer. What have you done to make your ride more comfortable? What do you wish you did sooner? Let me know in the comments.